Welcome to this second session on uh, SIMS help for module owners. And uh, in the first uh, session that we had, uh, which can be accessed through this YouTube link, we discussed how to use the SIMS platform for outcome-based education delivery. And in fact, uh, the main uh, reason for uh, settling on SIMS or the Creatrix, uh, the vendor, was the ability to uh, ensure outcome-based delivery using this platform. Uh, first, we talked about some preliminaries where we uh, saw how to log into the system, access the various modules or apps that are available to you, and just access the basic help and, and so on. Uh, then we saw how to update course information uh, in your system, that are the courses that are allocated to you, and then the importance of the module outline or the course outline. And in fact, that is the single piece most important uh, document that you should have in hand uh, before you start delivering your module and also before you start um, customizing your syllabus and your delivery uh, uh, process using SIMS. Uh, specifically, we saw how to specify course learning outcomes in SIMS, um, which is a must and because everything will be mapped to the learning outcomes and therefore this is a uh, absolutely essential part in using SIMS. Then how to create the syllabus uh, using uh, in, in SIMS and uh, how to map each of the learning activities to the, the learning outcomes. So in the syllabus you have uh, two types of um, uh, categories. One is a unit and one is called the, so under the units you have uh, topics. So the units could correspond to the broad uh, subject areas that you have in the course outline and the topics can uh, correspond to the uh, topics in the uh, uh, course outline or the module outline. And so it is good practice to adhere if you can to the guideline that one of the topics will not be more than two credit hours uh, worth of content and or, or activities. And uh, this would be helpful in um, assigning the learning outcomes uh, in a more meaningful way. Uh, so this is uh, the pre-recorded uh, session two on assessments and um, uh, well the help that you have on the online help is pretty good and um, again you can um, uh, access them by clicking that question mark that you see over here on the on your when you log into your profile and when you uh, click on the question mark uh, the uh, two types of online help will be available to you. One is uh, uh, the documented help that you can access by clicking help that you see on the uh, drop down menu and uh, or you can ask a query by logging a ticket into the system. Uh, the fourth type of, uh, the third type of help that you have in Teams is this video uh, tutorial that you have and especially for creating uh, question papers, question paper templates, uh, how to create the question bank, how to create the assessment pattern, which I will be covering subsequently, can be accessed through these online tutorials. And they are very nicely done. And um, so what I will try to do is uh, be a little more customized to SLTC requirements, but these uh, videos will help you also understand them in a general way. So I would recommend you to go through them also before you start uh, uh, creating new assessments and uh, assigning them to the student. So to do that, uh, click on this, uh, this chat box, the red one that you see at the bottom uh, in your profile screen or wherever you see on uh, Sims and uh, that would give you access to these videos and, and many more. And um, so that is a good place to start. So let's uh, see what we have over here in Sims. So there are, so let me give you a brief outline of the types of assessments that we have access to in SIMS. So the most important thing, just like the module outline, is that all assessments must be mapped to LOs, necessarily mapped to LOs. So there cannot be an assessment that is not mapped to a learning outcome. That is the key criteria that we have in SIMS. And um, to do this, there are three distinct types of assessments that are alive, allowed in uh, SIMS. Uh, one is an externally administered and evaluated assessment. Say, for example, like labs or design classes, where you set the assessment externally and you evaluate the assessment externally and the marks or, 
or uh, the, the grades that you get for the those assessments can be imported into the into SIMS. So that is one way of doing it. And these are called uh, outcome-based assessments in SIMS. So whenever you see the word outcome-based assessments uh, by itself, standing alone by itself, what that means is this type of assessments in SIMS. That are that these are assessments that you evaluate and administer outside of the platform or in a real physical setting and then uh, import the marks or, or the, or the, the uh, grades into SIMS. Um, so that is, that is one type of thing. The other one is completely administered through SIMS. Uh, so there are two categories in this. And uh, one is uh, actually three categories. One is SIMS generated question paper. So you can set the question papers in SIMS itself uh, using a question bag. And uh, you can um, um, assign these uh, question papers to students, or you can group wise assign them, or, and so on, and uh, administer them. And students can upload the answers through a link to SIMS, and you can download the answers and grade them, or you can online grade them. And uh, so I will talk about how to do this. Uh, then, in a similar way, you can also generate online quizzes using the question bank. And uh, a third type of option that you have is you can assign, uh, you can upload your assignment to the LMS and uh, provide through or through an external link, you can upload the uh, assignment and give students access to that assignment. So that is a, uh, your own question paper that is externally generated, but you must map all the questions to the learning outcome because the grades will have to be entered to the system as learning outcome wise, not question wise. So because we want to make sure that every assessment is mapped to the learning outcome. So if you give assignment from uh, your own question paper, make sure all questions are allocated uh, to ILOs or assigned to ILOs. And so finally you enter the grades using the um, learning outcomes, mappings that you have specified in the system. So what I will do is actually basically go over in this session, uh, try to go over how to do the uh, the first, uh, first and the last one. And in a subsequent session, um, uh, I will uh, try to do the second one because the second one is also very similar to the first one. So I will first try to do the first and the third one um, in, uh, in this session over here. So there are a few basic uh, prerequisites for creating and administering a session. And that is creating an assessment pattern. I think I did, a, I covered a little bit of this in the last session also, but for completeness, I will start here today also. And uh, then the next one is how to create a question bank. So you must create your questions uh, and store them in the question bank. You can uh, download them in an in a Excel file or then you can import them back uh, on a later date. Um, also, so you you can um, uh, type equations using uh, LaTeX if you want in in the in the question bank. So it is a very versatile tool for creating questions. And uh, then um, how to create a question paper? Uh, so this involves two things. First, you must create a question paper template. And uh, so the first uh, uh, question bank should be created and uh, approved. And uh, once that is done, you can create a question paper template. And then you can create a question paper. And once all of this is complete, you can assign uh, these assessments to students. So we will today we will see how to do these steps um, uh, one by one. So let us uh, first see how to uh, create an assessment pattern, which is the first step in administering an assessment uh, to students through this uh, uh, SIMS platform. So when you click your profile, you end up, when you log into the system, you end up on your, in your profile page. Uh, let's uh, choose assessments. When you choose assessments, you have these options available to you. So let's uh, click settings. And uh, these are the settings that you have, have access to. You ha can create the assessment pattern. You can create quizzes. You can create a quiz template. You can create exam names. So the exam names, uh, we have created some um, standard exam names like mid-semester examination, end of semester examination and so on. But if you want to use a different name, you can uh, set that exam name using uh, this option over here. 
and uh, if when you want to uh, administer a quiz uh, you can um, administer that quiz uh, by setting up your quiz over here by clicking in this link and before that you will have to uh, create your quiz template now this process is similar to the process of setting up a question paper using a, a question paper template and the question bank and uh, so therefore i will not cover it today but do it in a later date because it's very similar to what i will be doing today and um, and the assessment pattern is the place where you set up uh, how the assessments are being broken up and what type of assessments you will be assigning to the student so so that is the most important step and uh, the crucial step uh, the first step that has to be completed in administering the assessment so let's click on the assessment pattern so these are some of the assessment patterns that i have already created for trying out things and uh, to add a new assessment let's click this add new plus button and you are brought to this uh, menu over here where you can um, specify the assessment pattern that the name of the uh, the assessment pattern that you want to have for your course so let's uh, let me um, uh, let me give the name demo course assess month pattern and uh, give today's date and i will use the uh, calculation method as weight you could also use sum or any one of these things but i think the most common are weight or the sum so i will use the weightage based uh, calculation method and uh, when i hit submit the assessment pattern will be created and it will be empty and because i just only gave a name and a, um, uh, the type of uh, calculation method and uh, to add categories to this assessment pattern let's click this add category let's choose the add category or click on that and you are taken to this menu where you can add the categories that you would like to add to your assessment pattern so there are several grading categories that are available in sims uh, internal external summative and formative uh, we will not be needing internal and external at uh, SLTC. I have requested the vendors to remove those options from the platform and they will do that in the due course. What we will need is summative and formative assessment pattern. So summative means uh, the sum or the cumulative effect of the whole uh, uh, teaching learning process of the course. Uh, the assessments given to evaluate the cumulative effect. Uh, so things like uh, mid-semester examination, end of semester examination, or um, um, group projects, or end of semester YWAS can be considered as summative examinations. And formative examinations are the uh, examinations that are given continuously throughout the semester, um, the course, uh, and um, can be things like assignments, quizzes, um, or design um, exercises, or laboratories, or uh, inter intermediate presentations and so on. So let's first create uh, the summative category. Um, so you can ignore this parent category for the moment and actually it is not needed. And uh, again, I will use the uh, weightage based calculation method and I will assign 50% of the total marks to the summative category. So I will have two categories, summative and formative, uh, two main categories, summative and formative in the summative category i will assign 50 percent and for the formative category i will uh, assign 50 percent i will select delete display in grade book so that this uh, marks will be uh, displayed in the grade book so if you don't want them to be displayed in the grade book you can uh, hide it and uh, so i will select display in the grade book and the next step is this exam allocation template it is very important because it tells you the type of assessments that you will be administering through this platform or in your course. So we at SLTC will only use four of these things. Though you have all of these options, I have requested them to remove the unnecessary ones, but we will only use four of them. One is assessment with question paper. What this means is the question paper will be generated inside Sims and and uh, administered to the students through sims and students will upload the answers through a upload link and you can download the answers or grade the answers online and um, submit the answers uh, submit the marks for the the assessment um, to sims again all the questions uh, 
will have to come from the question bank because it is internal to the system and all questions when you create in the uh, the question bank will be allocated or will be assigned to a particular uh, learning outcome therefore in this process the mapping to the learning outcomes is automatic so this is the most preferred way of administering assessments in sims so if you can follow this this will be the easiest and the most convenient way of doing it but since you may have not used it you may uh, need a little bit of time to getting used to doing it this way but um, I have been uh, messing around with this system for about a week or two and I found that this is this seems to be the most convenient way of administering uh, assessments through the system because this is entirely designed for the system and to be delivered through the system the next uh, type of assessment that you have is assignment so assignment also has three categories one um, where you can give the assignment through a question paper designed through the system just like in the previous case then again the automatic the the ilo mappings or the learning outcome mappings to the questions and the marks for the learning outcomes is automatic so that is again uh, uh, one of the easiest ways of uh, giving uh, uh, assessment and um, uh, so um, i would also again recommend to use that option because that is one of the easiest ways uh, or again in the assignments you can you can create your own question paper externally put it in the lms or put it in some your google uh, drive or I, I i would actually recommend you to put it in the lms and refer ask the students to refer to that uh, question paper uh, but the important thing is since every assessment should be mapped to the learning outcomes all those questions you should externally map to your learning outcomes and now when you grade it you will have to grade your questions and then enter the marks based on the learning outcomes or learning outcome wise assessment uh, marks will have to be entered into the system now the third type of ass assignment that you have is actually you can externally give the exam uh, um, like in a lab or like in a design exercise or, and then uh, map the learning the, the marks to the learning outcomes again and enter the marks learning outcome wise so that is very important uh, the other type of assessment that we have in uh, sims is quiz creation this is again based on the, the question bank so it is similar to the first option that we have over here assessment with question paper uh, but it will only be so it, it will be online um, uh, evaluation so the student will take the quiz online so that's the only difference um, whereas uh, the assign assessment with question paper and assignment students will uh, take them offline uh, where quiz will be taken online and so you can time it and and so on again the questions will have to be based on the question bank that you have in teams and uh, since all questions are again mapped to the learning outcomes the the mapping process is automatic over here and uh, finally the outcome based assessment which is again like what i discussed externally administered and externally evaluated and marks entered to sims uh, based on learning outcome so you you can't enter the marks question wise what we have to enter the marks is learning outcome wise since we are going to concentrate on how the learning outcomes have been assessed uh, so that will be the process that we follow so the the exam allocation templates or the types will be these four and we will not uh, use the other two because they are not uh, mapped to the outcomes and i will i have asked the vendors to remove them and um, so we will only use the these four types of exam allocation uh, or assessment uh, assessments in sims so now uh, we can create the assessments that fall under the summative category so let me create the mid semester examination uh, so i will uh, make it an assessment with question paper and call it the mid exam so assessment print name will be mid semester examination the weightage that i will give for that is uh, 25% and i will add another one uh, that will be the end of semester examination so maybe i will um, so if i want to give an external paper let's say my final exam will be administered physically 
So the exam is uh, given outside SIMS. Therefore, the, the, the way of uh, uh, administering the exam is, uh, um, is uh, externally administered, externally evaluated, and grades imported to the system through an Excel um, uh, sheet or, or through the online tool that is available. So it will be outcome-based assessment. So again, you can give you uh, questions, question, the, the exam can be question-wise, but if you map the questions to the learning outcomes, you will eventually know for how for each of the learning outcome how many marks have been uh, given. So that is what you will have to enter into the SIMS because SIMS will be entirely keeping track of only how the learning outcomes have been achieved. So the end, again, the exam will be end uh, exam. Uh, weightage will be 25. Uh, I will give the name end of semester examination and uh, and so i will only have two subcategories uh, under the summative uh, category of assessment and so i will submit and uh, so okay so again sorry so so i made a mistake here so the total weightage for the summative is 50 so i should make this 50 50 means 50 percent of 50, which is 25. So what I wanted to do is actually assign 50% uh, of 50 for the midterm and 50% of 50 for the end term, which adds to 25% and 25% overall. So I will hit submit and that category has been created. So the summative category has 25%, 50% uh, of the total marks and out of that 50%, 50% will be allocated to meet the exam and 50% to the end exam, meaning 25 out of the total to the mid, 25 out of the uh, total to the end exam. So let me uh, add another category, the, the formative category. Formative, uh, calculation method again weight. I want to display it in the grade book. Again, the exam allocation types, I will use uh, um, assessment with question paper and assignment and um, outcome base and quiz creation uh, because I may want to give all these four types of um, assessments and um, so let's create the four types so I will uh, so since we did assessment with question paper for the mid semester I will only use assignment and go the, all the different types of assignments that we will do so assignment, assignment uh, with internal question paper. So let's put that as the print name. I will give 25% uh, of the total, that is 12.5 uh, of the total. So 25% of 50% is 12.5 add another one so again let me add the, another assignment base and uh, assignment with external question paper so question paper that you generate external question paper add 25 of the total which is 12.5 of the total actually 25 percent of 50 which is 12.5 and uh, with external question paper, add another assignment. So the three types of assignments that we can give: assignment uh, that is administered external, assignment administered external. So again, give 25% of 50%, which is 12%, so 75%. Uh, let me add a quiz also. Um, so quiz, quiz creation and um, assessment name uh, uh, quiz. So weightage, again, 25% uh, quiz. And uh, let me submit. So, 
and my assessment pattern, total assessment pattern will be created. Okay, so I have not specified the total weightage for the some formative part. So that is why I, it does not add to 100. So let me go back and edit that. So the total weightage that I want to add for the summative formative part is 50%. And so let me correct that. Um, that over thing. So I forgot to add that. So when I add it, okay. So I get summative 50% of 100, uh, formative 50% of 100, um, mid exam 50% of the summative, um, end exam 50% of the uh, summative. In the formative, I have set up three assessments uh, based on assignments and based on the three different types that are available in SIMS with ex internal question paper, external question paper, and completely administered externally, which is called outcome based and, uh, and, and quizzes. So the next step involved in uh, um, this process of assessment is to assign this assessment pattern to the course that you are delivering. And um, in the next few minutes, I will uh, go through that process. And to do that, let's go back to the uh, list of courses that you are offering. And the course that is relevant to me at this moment is uh, the demo course. And let me go to edit the details of the demo course. And uh, let's scroll down. And uh, when you go to the, go over here, this is the previously assigned uh, assessment pattern for the course. I want to replace it with the new one that I have created. Um, so let's go to the drop down menu and you will see the one that you had just created appearing in the drop down menu. Select that and I will get rid of this assessment pattern. So, and uh, submit it. But when you submit this, it does not get updated in the assessments. The reason for that is the module, uh, not the module owner, the, the program lead has to authorize this, this assessment pattern. This we have done for quality assurance and accountability purposes. And as a, um, uh, a check for ensuring that, you know, citywide or institution-wide procedures are adhered to and uh, standards are adhered to. So the program lead must, um, must authorize this before it can appear in the assessment. So if you go to uh, the assessments, again, if you go to assessments, and all the assessments that uh, come under you, all the other courses that come under you will be listed here. And if you select the semester that you are interested in or the course that you are offering is selected in, and that is October 2020 semester two for me, and uh, there are five courses that have been allocated to me under this semester. And if I select the courses, all the assessments available under these will be there. And in the demo course, so there are six assessments. And if you look at it, you will notice that the, still the previous assessment pattern is what, what exists over here. It is not the one that I created just now. So because the, the program lead has not authorized it. So let me quickly, um, let's let's go back and uh, well let me actually there are there may be a few program leads also here so for the benefit of the program lead let me quickly go and show how this can be done uh, uh, and authorize this new new assessment pattern so I will log into my program lead account for the program so I have created this test program leads for trying things out and uh, so I'll go to academics and in the academics module, the, all the options that are available for a program lead are listed. So the program lead has access to the plan of study, program of study, and courses. And under courses, the program lead has access to planned courses and all courses. And what the program lead needs to do is visit the program of study. So when the program lead uh, visits the program of study, all programs are listed here. You have to filter to the program that is of interest to you. So intro to Kiel is what I'm interested in. And uh, then the, that program gets uh, filtered and, uh, and uh, I will go to edit. And all the courses will be listed here. All the teachers who have been allocated to these courses will be listed here. 
and I will navigate to the course that I'm interested in. So that is demo course uh, in the TIL uh, program. And if you notice, see, this is the old course pattern that is still displayed in the system. So the program lead has to change this. And to do that, the program lead has to edit the faculty and assign the new template. So grading template, demo course pattern, and save changes. And confirm. And um, so that's a bug over here. Uh, so let's ignore that for the moment. And uh, let me go to the other one also. And uh, assessment pattern, demo course assessment, save changes, confirm. And so both teachers now will have the new, so I have two profiles for testing purposes. And uh, so notice that the demo course assessment pattern has got updated. The one that I had just created had got updated. So let's go back and see whether this has been reflected in the assessments module that I have access to under the courses. So immediately I would notice, uh, let's see. Um, so if I go here, if the, so the numbers were not different, so I will not uh, see anything. So if you notice, it has got updated. So these were the ones that we created uh, in this session and this, uh, these have been updated accordingly. And um, so you can have access to the grade book by clicking on this. And uh, so I have only four students under this course, the students created, so all the, the, the students will be listed here and the categories will be listed here once the grades have been published. Until then, you will only see a blank one. The next step in the assessment creation process is to create your assessment uh, uh, questions, or in other words, the question bank. Uh, to do that, let's uh, visit your course page. That, uh, you go to your profile and click academics, and you end up in your course page, which is this page over here. And if you click on this uh, action button, the, the three action buttons that you have access to, these are the uh, options that you have access to and you can edit. So you have question bank, question template, question paper, question paper upload is not available. Um, and, uh, so this will be removed from the menu uh, soon um, because uh, this can cause a little bit of confusion. Uh, so this is not right now uh, available to you. Um, so you have question bank, uh, uh, question template and question paper. Um, at your access and this last option is not working for you. So select question bank and you will be taken to how to create a question bank. Actually there, is a, there are a lot of um, uh, good videos available in Sims. Uh, when you click on this uh, chat box you will have a few uh, nice snippets on how to do this and that is very informative and very nicely done. For example, if you uh, click how to create a um, uh, how to create a single choice question for faculty, you click that. That video will appear here, and you can uh, that will videos are pretty good. So I would advise you to go uh, these things. But uh, for completeness, I will also show you how to create um, uh, uh, one type of uh, questions over here. So the type of questions, so to, in order to add questions to your question bank for the given course, go over here. So the options that are available, uh, you have edit, view and import. So you can export this question bank uh, using this button over here. And maybe on a later date, you can import it using this option over here. And you can edit the question bank using this. You can view the question bank using this. Or if you want to, this is a shortcut for adding new questions to the question bank. So let me um, click on add questions and I am taken to this menu here. So these are the type of questions, templates that you have access to. You have multiple choice, single choice. So this is a little misleading. So what you have to keep in mind is, these are MCQ type questions, multiple choice questions. Then what does multiple choice here mean? What here means is there are multiple correct answers. Here this is a, MCQ 
single correct answer type question this is a mcq multiple correct answer type question so these are short answer type questions these are long answer type questions these are matrix type question so let me uh, so since a single choice one is uh, demonstrated in the videos let me create a multiple uh, mcq that has multiple correct answers so let's click on that and then this uh, question creation tool appears and so let me type um, uh, a demonstration mcq multiple correct answer question one uh medium medium difficulty because the difficulty level will also have to be uh, added here and um, so you can uh, insert pictures uh, you can uh, format your question over here so you can type your entire question very nicely using uh, formatted text over here and um, uh, so this is pretty versatile and if you want to add question uh, equations you can you have this latex editor at your hand and if you don't know latex you can click on these things and uh, the, the the latex uh, command that corresponds to that appears so let me say sum uh, k goes from uh, 1 to um, infinity um, add the numbers um, uh, One over uh, exponential, so exponential of uh, um, k. So that appears, and. So you can type e equations very easily into the system and the maximum marks or the marks that you want to allocate for the question I will uh, so it is better to have a, um, a norm for you so each question will be 10 or 100 or whatever so that you can remember later on so I will add 10 marks the complexity I'm going to choose medium and it is a multiple choice and uh, the units so this allows you to map this question to the particular unit. So this is why I stressed at the beginning also that uh, it's important to break down your syllabus so that uh, each of the units and topics are quite descriptive and are quite manageable in sense of number of credit hours. So, so you can select the unit. So in this demo course, I had created uh, two units, introduction, data processing, and an advanced uh, data processing and test unit. Actually, I have four units. And uh, so let me quick click the, uh, choose the second unit and assign it to the uh, first topic in the second unit. And so this option count tells you the number of options that you have for the multiple choice question. So let me have four options. I will not give any negative marks. So the solo taxonomy, this, uh, this unit I had mapped to multi-structural um, illustrate. So you must have access to your uh, course outline when you are doing this, otherwise you will not remember these things. And then the ILOs will appear. So this was the, for this unit, this was the ILO that I had uh, specified. So this is very versatile. So, and it allows you to keep track of the whole process. And the maximum marks should be equal to the number of marks that you have uh, that you are going to assign or you can well if you want to have multiple ILOs assigned to this question which is not advisable thing to do you can split it maximum mark five for this and add another ILO to that but uh, that is not a very advisable thing to do so you can leave it in the draft mode or you can um, uh, select uh, you can review it. this is a self reviewing process so since if you don't want to once you have uh, approved it you can't delete it because for for safety purposes you are not allowed to delete it but um, uh, what you can do is you can always leave it in the draft mode and then um, um, 
approve it at a later stage. So since I want to, uh, I don't have a whole lot of questions. Uh, I used to need to um, use them. I will start by approving the, the question itself. So if I save it, the question will get added to this. Now let's change the options. So option one, um, this is uh, partially correct answer. Answer one. So I will out of the five, I may give five for that. And um, so let's say this is partially correct answer two. I may give two for that. Something happened. Uh, I will give two for that. Um, incorrect answer. I will believe zero for that. Um, correct answer. And uh, I will give 10 for that. And uh, so that gets updated. So I have created a multiple choice question in my uh, system. So if I want to look at all the questions that I have created, I can select uh, view and all the questions that I have created under multiple choice. So what, again, this could be a little confusing. What this means is, this is a multiple choice MCQ question, which has multiple correct answers. So they are, terminology is a little misleading, but that is what this means. It's a MCQ multiple correct answer question. So I have created four such questions and have approved uh, all of them. And uh, so let me go back. And so you can um, do similar things. You can add, uh, you can add uh, more answers, more questions to the question bank. You can, um, um, you can uh, view these things uh, and, and so on. So once you have created your questions in the question bank, you are ready to uh, uh, create a question paper. And um, then next few steps will, uh, we will go through how to create a question paper. To do that, let's go back to uh, our course list. And now let's uh, start taking a look at how to create a question paper. Uh, but before we do that, we need to create what we call a question template. Again, let's uh, go to these action buttons. And uh, you will see that you have these options of creating the question paper and question template. Uh, but before you cre cre create your question paper, you must create a question template. So let me start doing that. So there are two templates that I have already created. Let me uh, start creating another one for the purpose of this demonstration. So let's give a template name. Demo. Uh, course um, multiple choice let's say mcq multiple choice question paper template and uh, i will give one hour duration one hour and maybe uh, 15 minutes duration for that. The question label format, so the how you number the questions, one, two, three, or ABC, or Roman numbers, uh, I will use uh, one, two, three. The question section, so there, are, there can be two types or so. Each section will have a particular type of questions, either multiple MCQ, multiple choice, or MCQ single choice or long answer or short answer or matrix. So here you are allowed to have two sections so that you can have two different types of questions. So I will use part A and select um, uh, no choice. So again, these two other choices, please ignore. You will always choose no choice. Number of questions that I will get from the question bank are three. Marks for each question is 
10 because uh, that's what I have at the, entered. So it's always good practice to have the same numbers, otherwise it's going to be a little confusing. Uh, so since I have not created previous question papers using the old ones, the, these question banks, uh, I will enter three here. So the system remembers the number of the questions that have been previously used. So you can, in your question bank, you can um, uh, specify the new number of questions and the old number of questions over here. So what I, since I don't have a previous question paper, I, all my questions are new. So I won't have any old questions. So the question type is multiple choice, MCQ multiple choice. Uh, the difficulty level was medium. So the number of questions that I have are three and the units that it corresponds to, um, uh, I will select from over here and, um, and I will uh, hit submit over here. So once we have created a question paper template, we are ready to start, create a question paper. So let's uh, go to the your course page uh, and um, go to your course and uh, select, click on these action buttons and you will have access to the question paper creation tool. So you will select question paper. And so this is a question paper that I had uh, created before. So let me create another question paper for this demonstration purposes. Uh, leave the program uh, uh, blank, uh, don't select that. Um, uh, the, the course that you are dealing with automatically gets filled. Um, the question paper template, uh, I will use uh, this template. So all the templates that you have uh, created will appear over here. Uh, the question paper name, uh, so the exam name, I will use assignment number one. Uh, question paper name will be um, assignment number one. Uh, please select offline. Uh, online and offline with pre-generated question paper are not uh, applicable for us. So I have again requested them to remove them for avoid uh, confusion. And so you can specify your question paper here, it, it, um, pa paper he header over here. Uh, you, ha you have to give a, a unique uh, code, maybe you can use that. Uh, don't select auto-generated question. Uh, select number of copies to be one. And um, so since there were only two questions in that question paper, long answer, two questions, and um, had only 20 marks, only 20 marks appear here. And uh, once you are ready and all the required fields are entered, uh, we will hit submit. And the uh, the question paper has been created over here. So once it has been created, it is created as a draft. And so you have to review it. And uh, to do that, um, uh, design view questions go over here. And you have to add your questions to that because we had not added the questions. We had just uh, only created the question paper. So when, when you do that, uh, see the question paper is blank. And this is what you have in the question paper bank for um, for uh, long answer questions. So I will select uh, uh, this question and um, this question to be uh, in my assignment number one. And um, so I have no comments, uh, comment text. Um, uh, this, since it is required, let's say this has two questions. Uh, and um, and let's submit. And if you go to actions, uh, send for review. So you have to click the actions button. Then uh, when you send for review, do you want to do this action? Yes. and it will be sent for you. So go back to the courses, um, go back to the action button, and let's go to question paper again. 
So now your question will be updated to pending status. Um, now to review the question, uh, let's go back again. Uh, so again, this is a, a self-review process. So you must do it yourself. Uh, go to the design view questions. And uh, so you will see that it has been sent for review. So you, you review again uh, the questions that you have. You can delete it if you want um, or add different questions. And then go to actions and click review. And uh, you will be asked to confirm your action. And uh, it will be updated to uh, review. So let's again go back to your question paper and uh, you should see it being updated to the status. So here it says it has been reviewed. So your question paper has been reviewed. And uh, so if you want to see the formatted question paper, so if you want to see the design view, you can click that. And you see the preview process. And if you want to see the formatted question paper, you select the formatted question paper and this is how the question paper looks like. Long answer Q2, medium. So this is what I typed in the description and this appears over here. It says which uh, course outcome uh, and, um, and so on. So the question paper has been created. Now uh, we are now ready to actually see how to see, how to assign this question assignment to the students. Now that we have successfully created the question paper, we are ready to uh, assign this question paper to the students. Uh, let's see how to do that. To do that, let's uh, go back to our uh, assessments and uh, click on the semester and the courses. And uh, the courses course that is relevant to you. And let's click the assessment that you want to assign your the question paper that you had just created. So assignment with internal question paper is what we want to assign. So let's go over here, click edit. Assignment with question paper. So it will be evaluated by question paper. So these are the three types that I discussed over uh, at the beginning. And so these are the three types that are available. So you can uh, evaluate by question paper, which is what we, are, we have just uh, done. So we have created a question paper using the question bank. And so that question paper can be assigned to this uh, assessment. And that is what this means over here. Or we can externally administer this assignment that is uh, something like a design assignment or a lab assignment or something like that. And then uh, grade them, enter the marks uh, learning outcome wise and import those marks into the system. Or you can use a text based question. So we will not use this option over here. I will, uh, I have asked them to remove this and they will uh, do so uh, in the next version that they will give us. Uh, in a week or two. So the things that we will only deal with are question paper or outcome based. So let me uh, choose question paper because we have created a question paper using the question bank over here. So this is assignment number one and uh, add your description. So when you go here, the question papers that you have created will appear over here. So this is the one that we uh, created just now. So let me assign that. And uh, assignment submission type, file upload, uh, assignment files allowed, PDF and Word. Um, start date of the exam. So let me select uh, uh, today now. and end date uh, say tomorrow and uh, submit. So the maximum marks allowed for the question, if I remember right, it was uh, only 20 marks. So it cannot be more than that. And out of the 20, pass marks would be five and weightage for this is five. 
and uh, so if you select publish um, what that means is the results will be published so for the moment leave this uh, unselected because publish means publishing the results so at this stage you are only administering the uh, assessment or giving the assignment therefore leave this published thing uh, unselected for the moment so then um, the students that you want to assign this this assignment are listed here if you want to only assign it to a particular group you can do so by unselecting some of these students so let's say i only want to assign it to the uh, these two students this assignment so another assignment i will assign to the uh, other two students so you can assign uh, uh, this assessment uh, group wise and so let's submit and you will notice that this assignment has been assigned to students and uh, that it has been uh, let us next see how to give an assessment with an external question paper and uh, so to do that uh, what i will do is first uh, publish the question paper using the lms so let me go back to my profile and to the course so the course that i am dealing with is the demo course view add syllabus um, so i had already under data processing uh, created this assignment number 1 i have uploaded it uh, i could uh, edit and say give the description so i could add the description to it so description of the uh, question so i could say uh, this is assigned month number 1 uh, which is due on such and such day or something like that and upload it update it so now i have uh, given this assignment so either you can uh, so i think the best thing to do it is uh, give the assignment in the lms because now you can map the Uh, learning outcomes to that, or you can do actually what you can. What is better is actually if you can specify the course-wise, uh, the question-wise learning outcome allocation. And uh, I have not done this so, but uh, you can easily figure out how to do it. So I have about let's say ten questions. It is um, if it is all related to learning outcome one, then that is easy. But if it is related to two learning outcomes, we could say okay. 25% of learning outcome one this has 25% of learning outcome one this is again 25% of learning outcome one this is 50% of learning outcome two and so on uh, so that is uh, and also in the uh, topic itself you can specify the the if you go to edit what learning outcome this assignment corresponds to so here i have chosen a learning outcome one uh, so that way you can map all the questions so the students would know what the what each question is mapped to what learning outcome each question is mapped to because that is important because when you enter the grade you can't enter the grades question wise what we have to enter the grades is through learning outcome wise so let's see how to assign this uh, pre generated and pre published question paper as assessment to the student so let's again go back to assessment navigate to the semester to the courses that we offer and um, again to the semester and um, so let's assign that question paper to this assignment over here so again you click that so evaluate by outcome so the option that you have to select is evaluate by outcome because the question paper has been already set therefore we will select evaluate by outcome and the description is this is assignment number 1 given in the syllabus under the unit data processing topic assignment number 
and so we are going to grade it outcome wise course outcomes uh, because uh, the answers to this uh, um, so the the categories that you have to enter the, the marks will be uh, based on the course outcome and not on the question so the course outcome is this maximum mark is 20 because that question paper uh, well we can we can say anything so 100 i think uh, because that's an externally given one so we file upload we allow the students to do a file upload file extensions are pdf and word uh, start date let's give the start time now again and um, end date um, we we'll give the 23rd so maximum marks is 100 pass mark is 40 again it is for formative and 25 and we will not publish and we will again assign it to these two students and uh, and we will hit submit and now that assessment has also been created and assess assigned to only those students and uh, Again, uh, we will, uh, let's see how to uh, give an externally administered uh, question. And to do that, uh, we will, uh, let's again go edit. Uh, evaluated by outcome. Uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is a design based Based uh, assignment outcome type again course outcomes. So what is the outcome? So since this is all related to that, hundred uh, percent assignment submission time. You can uh, uh, leave it blank or you can uh, submit. So if you want to up uh, them to upload the design uh, design reports, file upload again PDF. Uh, start date, uh, we could say, um, let me say today again, end date. Uh, today, let's say 12.54 or 11.54, let's say in hour. And uh, maximum mark 100, pass mark 40, and again 25. And I will assign it to all the students. And let me hit submit. So now all these four types of three types of assessments have been have been created in the system and um, if you want to know how they how to enter the marks now you will notice that you will have to so let's click on for the for the, the assessment that we created last that is a assessment administered externally let's see how we enter marks okay so the since the submission has not been completed it does not allow me to enter the marks but uh, uh, so let's do the following let's go see how the students have access to these three assessments these three assessments that the students have um, been assigned to let's see how they have access to these uh, these assignments um, so to do that uh, let me uh, log out of my profile and log in using the student profile A student if you click on assessments <laughs> And um, so let's see. Okay, so these are the three assignments that we had created, and they have so demo course, demo course, demo course. And um, so not published means the results have not published. The so the status is given over here, and you can submit by clicking these things. So before we go visit these things, let's uh, look at what the student sees in the calendar. And uh, so if you only select the assessments. 
so the students would see all the assessments that had been allocated to the students so the student cannot say that the student did not know because we will ask we have requested students to only visit the their profile page for all assessment and notification information so they don't have to be externally informed because all these things uh, have been uh, assigned and they have been displayed to the students so let's go back to the assessments and see how uh, students can be can view these things so let's look at the first one assignment administered externally and um, so let's submit and um, so no preview because we had not generated anything so this will be ex uh, given to the students externally outside the sims and uh, but we can ask them to maybe upload uh, uh, the answer so let me go and uh, uh, submit and uh, submit something and So let's upload uh, something here and hit submit. So the student. And the start. So until the due date is over, the student can resubmit the the answer script so so here we have submitted this one and if you again submit it will i think show that a previous version has been so if you want you can download the attachment that you had the student can download the attachment that student uploaded with so we can do the similar thing for the question paper based assessment So let's uh, go to assessments again. Assignment with internal question paper. Let's look at what that looks like. See the question paper that was internally generated uh, will appear here. And um, so again, you can upload your answers similar to what we did before. Uh, say something I could uh, upload this. Uh, and submit. And so that has got submitted. And uh, so we did external question paper. Okay, so we will uh, see how to submit the externally set question paper. So the description that appears is, this is an assignment number one given in the syllabus under the unit data processing and topic assignment one. So if you want, maybe you can give a URL uh, if you want to put it in a Dropbox, uh, but always better to put it in the LMS and also put it uh, in your Google Drive folder and give the, the, the drive link so that the student can link it here and, um, and, and click and download it from here. And again, you can submit by clicking this. So let's not do that. Um, so let me, so that's a student view. Let me log out and let's uh, take a look at what we see when we, as the faculty, log into our system. Okay, so let's uh, now take a look at uh, what these assi uh, assignments that the students have uploaded uh, look like for us and how we can grade them. So let's look at the three distinct types of assignments that we have given. First, we gave an assignment with an internally generated question paper. Then we gave an uh, assignment with an externally generated question paper. And finally, an assignment that was externally administered com completely. 
And so let's see how we can enter the grades of these three different types of assignments that we have given. And uh, we saw how the students uh, see them and how the students uh, could upload their uh, answers. Uh, so uh, let's see how we can grade them. So this is the, this is the one where the students um, answered, uploaded the question uh, for an internally, uh, um, uploaded the assignment for an internally generated question paper. So if you go to enter marks um, and you will appear here. And so, so only one student had submitted and it says uh, submitted stated uh, one student uh, submitted. So we can click evaluate and the answer script appears here. And now since it was internally generated, question wise, uh, um, uh, marks can be entered because we had entered this, generated this internally and internally it maps to the ILO. So this is the best way of actually giving, a, giving an assessment. And uh, so question wise, we can uh, do the marking and question wise, we can assign to the ILOs and, and so on. So the answer script would appear here and uh, you, could, uh, you would be able to download it from here and um, uh, do the grading. Uh, say for uh, instance, maybe for question number one, out of uh, 10, I could uh, give five. Uh, for question number two, I might give 10. And so I can submit it. So in a future version, that's, uh, I think uh, in about a month, they said that they will give us the option of online annotating this answer script. Uh, or else what you will have to do is download it and uh, mark it and annotate it and save it in the, in your records. And if you want to give it to the students, then uh, uh, we will have to externally um, give it to the students. But in a month's time, uh, at least, uh, we will have uh, the online annotation option. So that, that way you can mark your answer online and the student will see the annotated answer script uh, on the student dashboard. So let's hit submit. And let's, uh, so, so since this uh, student has not been, uh, not answered anything, so let's give zero for that, for both these things. So, and submit. And uh, save and publish. So let's grade the, so that is published. And um, so let's grade the, Assignment with external question paper, the question paper that we uh, gave the students through the LMS and let's enter the marks. And now you will see that again, the, as previously this dashboard appears, we will uh, hit evaluate. And now you will notice that the only option that we, you will uh, get is the course outcomes, the, not the question wise, because the system does not know how the course outcomes are mapped to the question because the question paper was generated external. So what you will only get is the course outcome and you can only enter course outcome wise um, uh, marks for the question. So let's again uh, go over there. I just want to see here whether I had missed anything. Assignment administered externally. Assignment administered with external question paper. That is what we were looking at. Enter marks. So one student has submitted. So let's evaluate that. And the, the answer script that the student had submitted would uh, appear over here. And uh, we can again grade it over here. So you can download it and grade it and enter the marks later or you can um, annotate it in a future version which they said they will make it available in a month. So I will, uh, for this answer script, maybe I will give uh, 90 and uh, submit. For this student who has uh, not evaluated, uh, not submitted, I will give zero. And uh, save and publish. 
and let's take a look at the last one which is so both these results have been published assignment administered externally now this is like a lab or a design exercise and uh, so again let's go to so maybe the students can upload their answers or the lab reports uh, online and uh, let's again enter the marks you will come with the this dashboard and um, so the, there are there have been four students to which this assignment was given this was a class wide assignment so i can um, so let's quickly evaluate these ones that have not been sub, not, have not submitted um, so let's give them zero uh, this one also will give them zero and this also let's give a zero and um, so this student has submitted it let's evaluate it and again you see the answer script appearing and uh, you can um, either download it by clicking it over here or in a future version you may be able to annotate it and mark it so again i will for submitting i will uh, give 85 and uh, you can add your remarks over here if you need and let's save it and uh, publish it. So now let's uh, maybe go and see what the student looks like. Student uh, sees so assessments and um, so I have to log out and log in again because it has not refreshed. Let's quickly do that. So I go to assessments published. So see the marks appear for the student. If the student views the results with the yellow course outcome is so the student for what is important to the student is also what is the outcome and how much the student has uh, received marks for that particular outcome. This is the whole idea about outcome based grading. Again, let's uh, look at the other one. Uh, view result. So again, outcome based marks is what the student sees. So here, so this is the advantage of internally generating the question paper using the question bank because the each question and the learning outcome both will be displayed to the student and so question wise and uh, learning outcome wise grading is possible if you generate the question paper internally using the question bag. So let's go back and um, so the, all these things are published. Uh, let's take a quick look at the grade book if it is published. See now you will see that all these so you have summative and formative. In the formative question, we have given three assignments so far and they have been updated in the grade. So let's go back to the course and uh, view the course outcome attainment and what we see. And so this is the most important thing that we we have uh, we get. So so these things we will have to set. These are ones that we have set, and um, in the system itself. And this is the course outcome level achieved. And this is the most important piece of information that we have to evaluate the the how successful the student and we have been in the teaching learning process. So thank you very much. Um, uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me and uh, we can have uh, uh, several other online uh, real-time discussions also to uh, discuss, discuss these issues.